Oh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. And uh, thank you all for uh, getting here this morning. I know some of you had a little bit of a trip to make. Glad to make it back safely. Uh, we have an early start today because there's uh, uh, there are sub there's subcommittee hearings going on at 10 a.m. and uh, we want to accommodate members so they can attend those those hearings. At this time, I'll uh, I'll quickly give my opening statement and then uh, I'll, then I'll recognize the ranking member for his and then the, the, the chair and the, and the chair of the full committee and the ranking member as well. Uh, so. <clears throat> Today we're going to consider fiscal year 2017 funding uh, for military construction, veterans affairs, and related agencies bill. This is the first subcommittee markup of the season and, uh, and quite a quick start for the committee. Uh, Chairman Rogers gave us the, the green light and uh, $81.6 billion in budget authority, so we're ready, Mr. Chairman. Uh, our, funding target, uh, our funding target today is, uh, reflects the $1.07 trillion uh, 1.07 billion, excuse me, top line level, uh, which was enacted into law through the budget agreement uh, last year that so many of us supported. Uh, the funding recommendation includes uh, 7.7 .7 billion in military construction funds, 172 million in, in OCO funds as requested by the president, 73.5 billion for the Department of Veterans Affairs, 241 million for related agencies in our bill, uh, the American uh, Battle Monuments Commission. Uh, Arlington National Cemetery, the Armed Forces Retirement Home, and the Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims. In addition to being out of out of the gate early, uh, this year will this year has been uh, uh, this year there's been an increased uh, member interest in our bill. Uh, member requests are up 45 percent over fiscal year uh, 2016 level. Uh, we considered over 1,040 member requests since since March 1st. Uh, we put a lot of effort in, into looking to, into each one and uh, have accommodated the vast majority. Uh, of, the, of those requests. Uh, so the staff hasn't seen uh, much daylight, and uh, I know that because they were calling me at all hours of the day on Sunday. Uh, and so I, I want to thank them all uh, for their hard work and for their professionalism uh, throughout this process. And I certainly great, uh, greatly appreciate the participation and support of our subcommittee members on both sides of the aisle as we, uh, uh, as we considered priorities and funding levels uh, for the important programs in our, in our bill. We held uh, Oversight hearings that included the Department of Defense installations uh, secretaries and the, the VA secretary and inspector general. Um, I, I couldn't do it without the fine work of our subcommittee ranking member, uh, Mr. Bishop. Uh, he's been a great partner. The gentleman from uh, Georgia is uh, very knowledgeable and a true partner in conducting oversight. Um, somehow he always finds the uh, the flaw in, in, the, in our arguments and uh, graciously points it out, and so we thank him for that uh, with Southern charm. Uh, I'd also like to recognize the uh, chair and ranking member of the, the full committee for their tremendous levels of, of support for this bill. Uh, chairman Rogers has provided us uh, continued leadership and the funding levels uh, we need to serve our military and our veterans, and uh, he and Mrs. Lowy uh, continue to ask the hard questions uh, that uh, keep the focus on the veteran uh, but serve the taxpayer as well. All of us uh, on the subcommittee truly appreciate uh, both of their, their strong leadership. Uh, this bill provides comprehensive support for service members, military families, and veterans. Uh, it supports our troops uh, with the facilities and services necessary to maintain readiness and morale at bases here in the states and around the world. It provides for uh, Defense Department schools and health clinics that uh, take care of military families. And bill funds our veterans' health care systems to ensure that our promise to care for those who sacrifice in defense of this great nation continues as those men and women return home. Uh, we owe this to our, our vets uh, and are committed to sustained oversight so that programs deliver what they promise and taxpayers are well served by the investments we make. In military construction, uh, the budget requests uh, for the services were historically low. Uh, in the Army's case, it was the lowest request in 24 years. Uh, the Department of Defense prioritized the needs of combatant commands and new mission requirements uh, within their requests. Ex existing missions were often left short. Uh, I'm very happy to note that the recommended funding level uh, includes $514 million to take care of the uh, most critical projects on DOD's unfunded uh, priorities list. Uh, these are worthy projects that could not fit into the budget request, uh, such as reserve and National Guard readiness centers and an aircraft maintenance hangar and communications facility to support uh, F-35Cs. Uh, uh, the, recommend, the recommendation fully funded uh, family housing at $1.3 billion, uh, DOD schools at $246 million, and hospital <coughs> construction at $304 million. Uh, we provide $673 million uh, for, Guard and Reserve, for the Guard and Reserve, an increase of uh, $122 million uh, for projects in 21 states. Uh, we increased the NATO Security Investment pro uh, Program uh, by $43 million to uh, $178 million as requested uh, to support infrastructure for wartime, uh, deterrence, peace, and crisis operations 
uh, and training requirements. Uh, we include $172 million in OCO funding uh, for European Reassurance Initiative and Counterterrorism projects. Some of us got to take a look at those projects over the summer. Uh, given the horror that unfolded in Brussels yesterday, it's clear that it's critical to continue these uh, security investments. Uh, on the Veterans Affairs side, VA is funded at 3 percent over last year's enacted level. Uh, under the recommendation, VA will have $73.5 billion available for fiscal year 2017, which is a 98, which is 98 percent of the requested level. Uh, VA requested funds in addition to those provided in advance last year. We provided an $850 million increase in medical services, uh, which is 80 percent of what uh, VA requested in that account. In medical services, uh, we fully fund uh, the budget request for hepatitis C at $1.5 billion. Uh, veterans homelessness at 1.6 billion, uh, long-term care at 8.6 billion, uh, caregiver, caregiver stipends at 725 million. Uh, we also uh, fully funded significant increases uh, for these programs in response to uh, many member requests. Uh, 2.8 billion uh, for claims processing and 156 million for appeals, uh, 663 million for medical and prosthetic research, and $160 million uh, for the Office of Inspector General. Uh, we continue to focus on major construction oversight. Uh, the bill includes language that will hold back 100 percent of funding for the largest construction projects until VA uh, meets management conditions and we maintain uh, strict restrictions on transfers, uh, use of bid savings, and scope changes. Uh, we provide funding for the electronic health record, which I know is very important to everybody on this committee, particularly the chair and the ranking member, and uh, fully support uh, interoperability of the uh, health record between VA and DOD, but we fence the funds until VA meets milestones and certifies interoperability uh, to meet statutory requirements. Uh, we include language regarding improved standards uh, for the suicide hotline uh, and uh, certification of mental health therapists to expand access for veterans uh, who need uh, their care. Uh, so in closing, I just say this is a solid uh, bipartisan bill that's focused on the needs of uh, service members, veterans, and all their families. Uh, we had to balance priorities and figure out uh, needs versus wants, uh, which are tasks that are central to our duties as appropriators. In total, the recommendation is $1.7 billion over uh, the fiscal year 16 level, a 2.2 percent increase. Uh, the funding level for VA is the highest ever. Uh, within the VA recommendation, medical care is funded at 5 percent over last year's level, uh, continuing a, pheno uh, a phenomenal, a phenomenal uh, growth curve, as we all know. In military construction, uh, we've taken care of housing, schools, hospitals, and operational uh, missions needs, as well as an unfunded list. We made as many accommodations there as we could. So I urge support of the bill. I'd now like to turn to uh, my friend and colleague, uh, uh, Mr. Bishop, our distinguished ranking member, for, for his uh, opening remarks. Thank you very much, Mr. Bishop. Thank you very much for yielding, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> um, from your first day as chairman, you've set a very cooperative tone, and I want to thank you for continuing to be inclusive uh, as we work through this process. And of course, I, it has to be uh, due uh, in no small part to the uh, tone that is set by our chairman, Mr. Rogers, and our ranking member, Ms. Lowe. Uh, both uh, demonstrating a very strong commitment to our veterans and to our military, but at the same time uh, being able to disagree uh, respectfully and collegially uh, and still be able to, to get the job done. Uh, I believe, Mr. Chairman, that you've worked very hard with uh, very limited time to get to this point, and I'm pleased with several aspects of the bill. But before I uh, go into that, let me just mention that uh, this is uh, the last uh, markup uh, for our colleague, Mr. Farr. Uh, who is uh, retiring. Uh, he and I have served uh, <laughs> served together. Would, would the gentleman course, uh, yield for a moment? Yes, I will. Mr. Farr will like what's in the bill. Thank you. I yield back. <laughs> what, the before you put the bill? <laughs> we uh, uh, certainly will, will miss uh, Mr. Farr. <clears throat> I serve on uh, the uh, Agriculture Subcommittee with him also. And uh, he is always thoughtful and phenomenal and insightful with his questions and with his comments. And uh, Mr. Farr, I want you to know that uh, you will be missed very much, <clears throat> but we appreciate very much uh, your leadership over, over the years. Uh, back to the bill. Uh, first off, the bill provides uh, robust funding for military construction and provides adequate funding for both the active and reserve components. 
I was pleased to see that uh, for the base realignment and closure account, Mr. Farr, uh, the bill provides $25 million above the FY17 uh, budget request to help speed up uh, the cleanup of former Defense Department sites, which uh, I guess, according to Mr. Farr, have been going with all deliberate speed. Uh, I was also pleased to see that the bill maintains the tough but fair reporting requirements for the electronic health records to endeavor. Uh, the bill continues to prioritize the elimination of the claims backlog and includes healthy funding for the Board of Veterans' Appeals, although I'm concerned with the proposed reforms uh, to the uh, Board of Veterans' Appeals. Uh, nonetheless, I think that these are positive steps necessary to to ensure uh, that the VA functions better. Uh, while there are many things to praise, Mr. Chairman, one item that I am not particularly pleased about is the inclusion of bill language limiting the performance awards. Uh, as I've stated for the past three years, this language will not provide any solution in the short term and, in fact, may have more long-term consequences and compound the very problem that it attempts to address. All the language will do is make the VA a less attractive option uh, than other agencies when it comes to recruiting and retaining quality executive leaders, uh, resulting in the departments not having the very talent that it needs to solve the problems and the challenges that it faces today. Uh, turning away from the bill for a second, uh, Mr. Chairman, you and I have a lot of uh, discussions uh, regarding the Budget Committee and what it plans to do. Uh, so far, it's a real question if there will be a budget resolution due to unrealistic demands of a small minority of the House. Uh, the only reason I feel the need to mention the Budget Committee is that that delay affects our committee's work. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Chairman, for the Appropriations Committee to get back to regular order, uh, the Budget Committee needs to act or we cannot proceed to the floor until May 15th, which will set up yet another summer of failing to pass all 12 of our bills through the House. Uh, it's clear that a small minority only wants to relitigate issues that have already been decided and acted on by a bipartisan majority of both houses and signed into law by the president. I applaud uh, Chairman Rogers for honoring the allocation the bipartisan agreement set for fiscal year 17. Uh, would I have liked the BBA to provide more discretionary resources? Yes, of course. However, it did not, and we'll have to live with that until we can get past these unrealistic beliefs that cutting out, that we can cut our way to prosperity, we will have no choice but to follow the BBA until Congress faces the reality that the amounts are insufficient to adequately address the actual needs of our government responsibilities. As I said earlier, regarding the discretionary resources, this year will be tough, especially tough for the subcommittee because of our bill advances funds uh, to the medical services account. Uh, while we start off in the hole every year, when we factor in the VA's annual second bite of the apple, uh, this committee's work becomes even more difficult as we must balance the needs of the VA with the other federal agencies. As I've said numerous times, we must be more strategic about how we handle our federal budget. Now we need to take the next step, and that is to stop creating artificial crises. Mr. Um, Chairman, uh, would I have done some things differently? Yes. Uh, these markups represent, though, the first step in a long process, and I commit to you that I'll work with you uh, and the committee to address these issues as we move forward in the appropriations process. Hopefully, we can come to an even better work product. I thank you, Mr. Chairman, and with that, I yield back. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bishop, for those uh, thoughtful remarks and uh, all your uh, good work and cooperation and collaboration during this process. So at this time, I'd like to recognize the chair of the full committee, uh, gentleman from Kentucky, Mr. Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you and uh, Mr. Bishop for working together uh, to uh, produce uh, this first bill of the 12 uh, in this, uh, this season. And uh, I want to commend you for working through your hearings expeditiously and uh, putting this bill forward in, in a very timely manner uh, at our request, and you responded uh, perfectly. Uh, this is, a, I think, a, a balanced bipartisan bill. It provides essential services uh, and benefits to our veterans and ensures that we move forward with important construction priorities for uh, DOD. 
$81.6 billion for VA and, uh, and our military construction accounts, $1.8 billion over the 016 levels. Uh, <clears throat> after our men and women have honorably served in our armed forces, uh, they deserve access to quality medical care, educational opportunities, job transition services, housing, and other important programs. They deserve to know that these services will be there when they finish their tour of duty and that they will be able to access them in a timely and efficient <clears throat> manner. In recent years, VA has missed the mark on providing our veterans with the services, programs, and care that they've been guaranteed by our government. The patient wait lists at VA hospitals, reports of pain prescription mismanagement, and the backlog of disability claims are just some examples of the unacceptable developments we've recently witnessed at VA. Uh, this subcommittee and the full committee working hard to provide the VA with the tools it needs to reverse this trend and offer veterans the standard of care and responsiveness they deserve. There are several provisions I'm particularly pleased to see, Mr. Chairman, in, that you included in the bill. First and foremost, I appreciate that the committee is prioritizing our longstanding initiative to reduce the disability claims backlog, uh, $2.8 billion for that effort including $180 million for paperless claims, $153 million for the digital scanning of health records, and $27 million for centralized mail. <clears throat> the bill also uh, makes the requisite investment in uh, speeding up the disability claims appeals process, $46 million <clears throat> increase in funding for the Board of Veterans Appeals. <clears throat> <clears throat> In addition, the bill also uh, holds VA accountable for ensuring that its electronic health record system is fully interoperable with DOD's corresponding system. I can't believe we're still talking about doing this. Uh, we've been harping with both DOD and VA for years to make these systems so that a veteran, having been injured on active duty, when he comes to a VA hospital as a veteran, can't access his records from DOD. That's unacceptable. It's, it's uh, insane. Um, but we're slowly, slowly walking through the mud pie to make that happen, but it's been slow. Um, and I hope, that, beyond hope, that we can make them speed that process up. Uh, the bill provides $260 million for the modernization of the VA electronic health record. It also clearly states that this funding will not be made available to the VA until it certifies that its system is interoperable with DODs and provides Congress with a clear plan for modernization of the current system. And I applaud the subcommittee Mr. Chairman, for withholding those funds uh, until they give a certification. <clears throat> Finally, <clears throat> the bill includes several provisions aimed at increasing oversight and accountability at the VA. We've all heard the reports of wasteful spending, construction cost overruns, negligence at our VA hospitals. I'm particularly concerned about the mismanagement of pain medication prescriptions by VA health professionals and the troublesome news that proper prescribing protocols were not always followed. We know now that this gross negligence has led to the death of at least one veteran. This committee has long fought uh, over the overprescription and abuse of opioid medications. And the news <clears throat> that the VA system <clears throat> has contributed to this epidemic, as CDC says, unacceptable. The bill provides necessary resources for VA to end the abuse and mismanagement of opioid prescriptions and ensure that our veterans <clears throat> 
receive responsible pain management care subject to the appropriate uh, treatment protocols. <clears throat> so, Mr. Chairman, this is a good bill. Uh, you've done a good job, you and Mr. Bishop and the committee, for putting it together very timely and I think responds to the needs of our men and women who sacrifice for our betterment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate those remarks. Uh, <coughs> this time I'd like to recognize our distinguished uh, ranking member of the full committee, uh, Mrs. Lowy, for her comments and remarks. Well, <clears throat> I thank you, Chairman Dent and Ranking Member Bishop, Chairman Rogers, and I particularly want to note how cooperatively Chairman Dent and Ranking Member Bishop work, and I want to thank you. Uh, this is certainly a good beginning, and I hope this is an example of all the good cooperation that will follow. And before I make my remarks, I just want to say we are all shaken and heartbroken by the tragic attacks that took place today in Belgium, and our thoughts and prayers are certainly with the victims, their families, and all those affected. In fact, I was, what do you call it, instant messaging with a, a dear friend who was over there who's now back to New York. Um, but I uh, know we were all shaken with that, and as leaders of the appropriations process, we do have the unique responsibility to federal agencies that keep American communities safe have the resources they need to accomplish their mission. As such, I do hope the, we will proceed with regular order as our good chairman wants to do, especially as you think about homeland security, commerce, justice, science, appropriation bills, as you determine the schedule of the bills in the appropriations committee. Uh, as we all know, the Homeland Security and CGS bills fund critical investigative and law enforcement agencies whose mission is to uncover and prevent attacks and hold accountable those who would do us harm, including the FBI, the Transportation Security Administration, Customs and Border Protection, U.S. Marshal Service, U.S. Secret Service, Coast Guard, U.S. Attorneys, Additionally, grants from the Office of Justice Programs and Federal Emergency Management Agency help communities proactively address vulnerabilities and response capabilities on their own. Um, so I must note that for months <clears throat> we've heard commitments from you certainly, and I know how much you want to pursue regular order on this committee, Mr. Chairman. We've heard, certainly heard from the speaker and others in Republican leadership that the budget and appropriation process will return to regular order and adhere to the bipartisan agreement enacted in late 2015. Yet, at our first markup, the House still has not passed a budget. And there are those who say, <sighs> many of the uh, <laughs> those who comment on our process will say, we never will. Uh, and the speaker now is threatening to keep appropriation bills off the floor unless a budget is passed. Frankly, I don't get it. I don't understand it. It seems to me the most extreme voices in the Republican conference would renege on last year's bipartisan budget agreement, continue to reject as insufficiently radical the Republican budget resolution. I don't know the majority's path forward. Again, I know Chairman Rogers wants to return to regular order and do our work. But it seems to me, given what's happening out there, given the comments, we are not on track for regular order or responsible governing as we are leaving for almost three weeks of recess. How irresponsible is that? So, turning to military construction, and again thanking you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Ranking Member, for your good work. This bill provides $81.7 billion in discretionary funding, which is $1.2 billion below the fiscal year 2017 budget request, and a $1.8 billion increase above the fiscal year 2016 enacted level and would constitute a number of important improvements, including furthering the reduction of the veterans' claim backlog, which has dropped from 600,000 to 80,000 in the past two years, 
Uh, and I just want to say with regard to the chairman, uh, we have had open, <laughs> closed hearings. Uh, we have appropriated more money, and I still don't see aggressive work on the part of the Defense Committee and the Veterans Committee to really get their act together. Um, I know the Veterans Committee is continuing to work on VISTA. The Defense Committee has another client <laughs> working on their system, and I hope we don't have to have several more hearings to resolve this issue. Emphasizing the need for prosthetics designed for women and renewing the VA's focus on improving access to both medical and mental health services for female veterans who have different needs than their male counterparts. I thank you for that. Strong oversight, <laughs> which I mentioned, of the electronic health record system. Um, we are requiring, and I thank you for that, benchmarks throughout the fiscal year and improve interoperability within the Department of Defense. Finally, I would be remiss not to note that as the appropriations process proceeds, funding levels will be extremely tight for critical priorities that we must not shortchange. Last year's bipartisan budget agreement keeps domestic discretionary spending essentially flat. However, the needs facing our nation have grown significantly, including for me veterans' medical services. We'll soon see that rising rent prices have raised costs for federal housing assistance. FHA receipts are down, restricting an already tight total spending level. Increases are necessary for the decennial census, Secret Service candidate protection, much more, and I mention all the other things that our other committees fund. I'm con really concerned that, yet again, we are embarking down a path of increasing funding for bills early in the process without a plan to provide adequate allocations to other critical priorities, including infrastructure, education, I mentioned at the beginning, Homeland Security, um, which will be cut as a result of these investments. Furthermore, emergency investments are critical to address new and urgent challenges like aggressively confronting the Zika virus, helping Flint, Michigan, protecting other communities from lead poisoning, and fighting the epidemic of opioid abuse, which I know is on Chairman Rogers' agenda. Let me just say, my colleagues, meeting these responsibilities are very serious. It will require emergency spending, flexibility, and wisdom in allocating our scarce resources. So I really look forward to working with all of us. You know, when I came to the Congress, Mr. Chairman, we used to say there were Democrats, Republicans, and appropriators. And I know you want to get us on track. And I do hope with your strong leadership and with the commitment of the Speaker to get us on track, we can somehow get our work done and I hope there's a lot of thought given to the work we have to do during this two and a half, almost three week break. You know, we can continue to debate, we can partisan squibble, we can hear some things we don't agree with, some nonsense, some take it seriously from our presidential candidates. But all of us on that committee, this committee, takes seriously our work. And we're proud to be citizens of the United States of America. I'm proud to be part of this budget committee, this appropriation committee. So if we continue to go along with this nonsense that's going on and not do our work, shame on all of us. That's it. I'd like to thank the uh, ranking member and just want to add that uh, I think it's fair to say that the members of this committee are committed to the agreement that was enacted at $1.07 trillion. And I'm pleased that the chairman has uh, indicated that all the bills are going to be marked to that level. And, you know, we, we will abide by the law. We will abide by the law. Which <laughs> law? <laughs> Current law. Uh, the, uh, uh, but, no, we appreciate the ranking member's comments on that point. Mr. Chairman. I'd like to recognize the full chairman. Let me add to the, let me add to the earlier comments by Mr. Bishop about Mr. Farr and his service on this uh, committee. And his, uh, this is the last markup of this committee's bill that he will involved with, uh, but he's been a steadfast member of this committee and the subcommittee for a good while and uh, always is a, a cheerful attitude. 
Well, 99% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's the official, unofficial photographer of the Congress. If you've not received a, f a picture that he's made of you, you're in the minority. Uh, so thank you uh, for great service uh, to, uh, to the Congress and to the committee and to the subcommittee and uh, to each of us personally. We'll, we'll miss you, my friend. Now, Mr. Chairman, I don't want Mr. Farr to think that I don't want to give a very eloquent speech, but I know there's a lot more time, and I'm going to save my eloquent speech because as these bills move through the process, I know I will have a good deal of opportunities to tell everyone uh, how important I think you are and what a good friend you are and what an important member you are who tells it like it is. So thank you. Can't resist it now. I'd like to recognize any uh, members of the Mr. Mr. Farr. Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, when you announce your retirement, everybody starts talking to you like you're dead. So it. Uh, <laughs> it's, you're just on the re you're in the relaxed caucus now. But I but I just want to say something, and, and Mr. Rogers, uh, I want to thank you. I think one of the things that I love about Congress is the work that committees do. I mean, this this is it. This is this is you know when you think about it. The world hangs on every word we write and every number we approve. It's the law of the United States of America. And it's so important that we do this work well. I, and I love the committee process, particularly Appropriations Committee, because we meet like this. Uh, it's not a, you know, it's not. It's, it's so much more informal. It's it's a working committee. You roll up your sleeves in this in this thing. And th so when you leave Congress, this is if, if you, the job you're leaving is the committee work. And I, and I just that's the hardest thing to leave. But thank you for all these uh, wonderful accolades. And I'll continue to take pictures. Although I dropped my camera in Cuba yesterday and <laughs> smashed all over the place. So. Uh, oh my God. I'll, 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 I'll get a good new lens. And I, may I say something on the markup too, Mr. Chairman? Um, there's, one, there's one issue I didn't even, I just read it, and I, it's not my issue, but Mr. Bishop brought it up, and I really thank your leadership on this. And it's the section that says that um, uh, no funds will be made for performance awards. I don't totally understand the implications of that. But let me just tell you a story. Uh, there's a woman named Lisa Freeman who runs the VA hospital in Palo Alto. And you know, Palo Alto's in the middle of Silicon Valley. One of her staffs told me that they were doing a survey of uh, Silicon Valley executives. And in, in California, and I'm sure most of your states, some of the highest paid jobs in the entire state are hospital administrators. And when they were doing a survey and asked, they know how good she is. She's the one that the VA pulled out of Palo Alto, go down, where was it, to Arizona or Texas, where the, the big screw-up Phoenix? Yep. They had her staffed, you go down there and fix it up, and she, and then she went. I don't know whether we pay her bonuses, but one of the staff said the, the people doing the sal salary survey were just absolutely shocked that we could get such a talented person for the low pay that we give her, which is part of the federal schedule. And, it, and essentially said, you know, if she were in the private sector, her salary would be well over a million dollars. So there, what I hope, this, let's, I, I'd like to know what the impact's going to be on this performance award. Essentially, you know, we have MRAs and we can use the money at the end of the year to give our employees a, a, some kind of a performance adjustment. Um, it may be fine. I, I don't know. I just think we ought to understand what the implications are because we don't want to lose people like Lisa Freeman and they're in government all over the place so that's a comment that I have to make otherwise Mr. Chairman I, I thank you very much yeah I, I have a lot of ideas I'm always putting them into these bills and thank you for accepting them thank you Mr. Farr uh, any other members that have uh, might have comments on the legislation uh, seeing none uh, I would like to, at this time, recognize Mr. F Mr. Fortenberry. Oh, or any amendments, I'm sorry. Any amendments to the bill? Uh, seeing none, at this time, I'd like to recognize uh, uh, Mr. Fortenberry uh, for the purpose of a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that the bill be favorably reported to the full committee. 
Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Uh, opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The motion is approved. Uh, I ask unanimous consent that staff be permitted to make technical and conforming changes to the measure just approved. And uh, by the way, please ensure that all the materials that are, be are before you are returned to the subcommittee staff uh, before you leave the room. Thank you again for your cooperation and for getting here so early for some of you. I know this was not easy. And uh, welcome back from Cuba. Mr. Chairman, Mr. thank you for scheduling this uh, markup for when we could be here. Oh, appreciate it. No, happy really to happy to was, accommodate. Uh, thank you all. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Meetings adjourned. Thank you. Congratulations.